Hello, my name is Nathan, otherwise known as the Old Man, and today we're going to build ourselves a better Slayer Exciter circuit, one that's going to last you for hours. Anyway, enough talk. Let's get into the build, and I'll show you exactly how to get it done. All right, we're going to build out this Tesla coil right here. We have our power source. It is 50 volts and 10 amps. We're probably only going to use 40 volts on this. It's most consistent that way and probably anywhere from 3 to 6 amps. So, let's take a look at the things we'll be needing today. Here's a power supply. It is 12 volts, 1.5 amps. And that's just going to power our little fan here. That's going to go to our heat sink. We have a heat sink. We have our mop set here. The MOF set is a 2SA1962. Don't worry about it. I'll put it on the schematic so you guys have it. We have a 47K ohm resistor. We're going to need one of those. We're going to need a little heat shrink here. Again, it's 1 8 to 1 16 heat shrink. It's pretty small. We're just going to use a couple twist ties here. And that's pretty much it. We're going to need our soldering iron and a little bit of solder as well here. And we're good to go. Let's get into this, guys. Let's go ahead and start putting this circuit together. I'll get it a little closer. So, I have a schematic right here. It's a pretty simple point-to-point -point schematic, and we're just going to follow it. We're going to start over here. And we're going to work our way through. Don't worry about this. I'll put the schematic later in the video and walk it through one more time. But let's just go ahead and solder it point to point and show you where it goes. Now, first thing we're going to do is connect the bottom of our Tesla coil. Now, this this wire here. And what do I mean by bottom of my Tesla coil? Well, right here we have our number two coil. And that will go to this wire right here. So the bottom of that goes to this. So that's the only wire that gets hooked up from the number two coil. And the other one gets connected to nothing. It goes into the air and that's where your spark's going to go. Now you could put a toroidal on your Tesla coil. That's up to you. That's the top piece that goes on there. I don't necessarily think I need to do that today because we're going to build it for resonance, not for sparks. We're just going to solder that right there. And you notice I put it in there and I left a little bit out on the end. That's because I'm going to add the resistor onto this side. Now this is opposite of what you're normally doing. Normally you're putting the resistor on the other side. Again, we're building for resonance here, not for spark. So, I put it on this side. Now, your resistor is bipolar, so it doesn't matter which way it goes. All we need to know is that we put it in here. Put a little solder on there. Make sure it flows right in there. And we are good to go. Let's take a look at it. We just have a little resistor coming off of there. And you're going to have two wires that come into this one. This right here is going to be the negative wire to my power source. And this other white wire that I have right here will go right into the bottom of our Tesla coil. So when I say bottom on this one, I'm talking about this coil here. This is our number one coil. Top, bottom. So this is our bottom wire. So let's go ahead and do those. And both of those get hooked to the other side of this resistor here. Let's put a little solder on. Again, solder anything onto these wires that you need to. A little more. Make sure it flows on there. Okay, we have a good connection. Let's move on to our second one. Again, we'll put a little more solder on here. And we'll just connect that. Take out that little piece right there. 
So far we have three connections. I left them long like this so that you can see them go in there. This one before the resistor. The power wire to our negative right here after. This right here goes in to the bottom of our number one coil. That's pretty simple. Let's go ahead and hook in the top. This is the top to our number one coil right here. Now I soldered these ahead of time on the ends of these just to prep them. So all I'm going to do is run some solder here. This one's going to go right here to the center. Let's make sure the connection's good. And we're good there. Now the very last wire we need to connect in is the positive. This is my positive going to my power source. Make sure it's in there. And this is pretty much what you're going to end up with in the end. This is the whole circuit, guys. Positive, right here, this red wire. That goes to our power source. This wire right here in the center goes to the top of our number one coil. This wire here goes to the bottom of our number two coil. 47K ohm resistor. This wire right here goes to our Tesla coil and it goes right on the bottom one. This white wire right here goes over to our negative on our power source. That's pretty much the circuit guys. So all we got to do is wire in this little fan and we should be good to go. Okay we're going to set up this fan now with this power pack. Let's take a look right here. 12 volts, 1.5 amps. We don't need any more than that. Here's our PC fan here. Real simple. Now, let's look at the end that matters for us. Four wires. Not really going to be a problem. We're going to connect it with two. Let's see if I can't get it to show. Right there. Okay, on the very top it has the line. Then it has TKG and a number. Now we don't need the TKG or the number on this. Those two are irrelevant to us. The line on the very top, that's negative. The one right under it is positive. Those are the only two we need out of this. So let's separate this out. Again, our outside wire is negative, so when you look at it to keep reference, the outside wire here, that's our negative. So, hopefully this will be pretty easy. Let's strip these back real quick. Thin wires, just make sure you don't take off too much. Or else to start fraying wires out. Alright, that's pretty simple. Let's look at our power pack now. All we did was cut off the end of this thing. So we're going to strip this one back. Here's what you get. You got outside shielding here. We're just going to go ahead and peel that shielding back. If you get all of it, there's a bunch of little wires. Pull them together. And we're just going to twist tie them. Or you know what I mean. Pretty simple. Now this white wire is always positive. These ones right here are always negative. And there we go. Now, we're going to get some heat shrink out here. Take a piece out. Again, that's our heat shrink. 
Okay, we got our two different size heat shrinks here. Again, let's look at this wire. We want these out two side two wires right here. The very outside was negative. Negative is going to get our longer heat shrink. The shorter one goes on this other one. That's our positive. And again, it has to do with this wire here. Negative and positive. Just makes it easier with two different height size shrink tubes. Now, let's go ahead and solder this together. That one's good. And we'll go ahead and isolate this one. And that one's good. Tug on them. Just make sure that they're good. Here was a reason for a little bit extra on this heat shrink right here. It's got that shielding we need to cover. So there's that one. And there's that one there. I'll go over that one. I like to cheat here. You can use a shrinking gun. You can use a lighter. I don't like either one of those things, man. I, I don't like anything touching my wire that's going to burn it. And usually those two things do it. Especially when you're not used to the heat gun. I could do it probably all day long, but that's not the point here. This is a simpler method for those who just want to start out. Don't use the top tip of the soldering iron here. Again, we're not trying to put any solder anywhere. You don't want any metal on this. And just try not to touch any other wire on this. All right, this is about done. Okay, now that we have everything wired in there, our MOSFETs wired into our heat sink, and we have our fan wired, let's go ahead and take care of this. This is right here, tells you the direction, these little fan blades right here. The other side, you notice, doesn't have any, just a regular fan. So this side, it always points to the direction. So, we're going to connect that right here. I'll go ahead and put some zip ties on it, and then we're going to go ahead and test. Now that we saw exactly how to build it, let's go ahead and test it. Let's see what our hard work has done. Let's get into it. So what you're looking at is this is my uh, Tesla coil. It's been running for about 40 minutes now on the same MOSFET. So I just want to show you a couple things. Let's go in and take a closer look right now. We are at 40 volts. And here's the uh, MOSFET right here. I'll show you what it actually is in here in a little bit. As you can see, I just have a little fan connected right here to it. And just on a heat sink. Cool to the touch. That's cool to the touch. We have minimal breakout at the top. In on my case, that's good. I just want to see that it's lighting things up. As you can see, right behind it, we're all lit up. So let's go ahead and let's take it to the dark and let's see it. And then I'll push this thing the rest of the way. I believe I only have, what, 50 volts in this thing. Maybe 60. So there we go. We'll set the camera right there.
So let's take a look real quick. Get out my tape measure. There we go, we need some light. And right about eight inches right there. Breaks down. So what we're getting here is we're getting eight inches that it's really bright and then at about 20 inches is when it breaks down and as you can see the lights behind it we're still glowing see right there we pick it up so right now for our grabby flyer this is actually really good we have a consistent voltage on here we have a consistent distance we're actually making good progress here. This circuit's going to last probably what? It's already 45 minutes or so, 30, 45 minutes, man. We are going to last for hours on this circuit without any problem. Now, as you see, it's just a MOSFET hooked up. I don't have any diode protection on it. Uh, I have one resistor on it. Again, I'll, it will show a schematic here. Let's go ahead and light this up. Now, the one bad thing is it does heat up when you get over 40 volts. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what more we can get out of it. So you can see our breakout increase. Also, our distance doubles. Way further out, right over here. The mop set is red hot. But, let's see. So, let's go ahead and let's turn it back on to about 40. Let's see if it cooled down yet. Okay, we're good to go. That only took a few seconds. It got real hot real fast, but then it went down real fast. So, I just need another fan in there if I want to run it at the higher voltage because there's 10 amps in this thing. So I would say normally 5 amps is good, 10 amps is pushing it. Uh, and, but with another fan, I might be able to pull it off bigger uh, piece of a chunk of aluminum right there. It would probably be just fine. Let's go ahead and let's turn it back up to 40. Not a problem whatsoever. Huh, funny though. Doesn't like to be on down there, but right here it looks just fine. You see we got a little bit of breakout. Interesting. Yeah, it still work. All right, so everything's off. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at the circuit. Okay, here we go. Here's our breakdown of how this works. I'll walk you through it so we understand it. First of all, here is the part number right here. 2SA1962. Okay, it is max 230 volts 15 amps so we got a pretty good one here okay i ran it at 40 volts and 8 amps and that's for 45 minutes without it breaking down so we're doing good there now here's a little breakdown on this here's our power source all we got to do on our dc power source let's write that on there dc a negative goes right over here to a 47k ohm resistor okay that same resistor goes off 
goes to the bottom of the number one coil and then the resistor itself connects right over here now this MOSFET is right here with the writing on it so it would be 2SA1962 right there so as you see the writing on it this is the exact way that it connects so you see that will go right over here to the top of the number one coil let's go ahead and take a look here this pin here that also connects the resistor but it goes before the resistor right here goes to the bottom of the main coil which is the number two coil so that big coil right there that goes to the bottom of it and that's this end here now the last end of it here will go here to our positive right here on our DC power source now you can use whatever you want as your power source I just use the simple power source here there's what it is there's the brand dork uh, we are looking at output at 36 volts well I guess we were running at 10 amps but we had our voltage down but that's what it says anyway I still stick by the 8 I don't think it pushed out 10 anyway here's the little fan thing here let's go ahead and take a look at it this is just a small little fan you can find on Amazon I'll link you to a pack of them anyway it keeps this thing real cool you can get a piece of metal whatever you want what I would suggest is a CPU cooler, and I'll go ahead and put that in there. You have to drill and tap it, but it's going to be way better. Anyway, this is just kind of show you the setup here. Here's our coil. And as you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five? Yeah, five. One, two, three, four, five turns on it. Guys, this is just a uh, wire from a wall. Look, look, that's all it is. Yeah, I did a bad solder job, but that's okay. It's working, man. And this is AWG28 on here. Uh, I couldn't tell you how many turns. I'd have to test it to find you exactly that number. But as you can see, it works out. I just grabbed a coil I had random on the shelf to put this together. But, uh, no, it, it turns out well. And on these fans, by the way, if you do end up using them, you only need two wires out of it, the ground and the positive. The other one is data and something else. You don't need it. PWM, I think it was. Anyway, there, I'll go ahead and take a picture of this. And then I'll also take a, a picture of the uh, actual MOSFET and the breakdown of it. So you can get a little more into it if you want to. Other than that, that's pretty much what it is. Okay, one more time. This is the schematic that I wrote for this. Go ahead and take a screenshot of this. Let's go ahead and move on to our uh, data sheet here. Take a screenshot of this. This is uh, also really cool. Gives you all the breakdown of it, what kind of uh, MOF set it is, things like that. Uh, that way you can look it up in case you want to learn more about it. Okay, this right here is our MOF sets right here. I'll leave a link for these parts in the description from Amazon. One thing, guys, I get uh, a little bit of kickback on when you buy things through the ad link. So if you want to help support the channel, please buy it through there. Otherwise, this is what it is. You can uh, go ahead and look it up on Amazon, but I will leave the link in the description. Also, this is the resistor right here. Pretty simple. You probably might have one at home if you built something like this. Uh, this right here is the CPU cooler. Now, again, you'll have to drill and tap it, but you're going to get a way better result on the cooling factor because it was meant to cool things like this uh, or heavy uh, CP, CPUs, I mean. So, anyway... That's it. If you like the other setup, uh, here's the fans right here. Uh, they blow really good. I use these on my 3D printer uh, when I build a standalone on it. So it works really good. And the actual heat seek I used in this video, I just got it off the scrap pile. So any one you can find usually works. Generally, the bigger the better. This is a really fun build for me today. I enjoy making Tesla coils. I enjoy making circuits. I don't like circuit theory. I'd rather do a point to point so that everybody can share in this together. Anyway, if you like what you saw here today, please like, share, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and have yourself a great day. Thank you.